what is it that makes us human? This, indeed, is a question that has been asked in many different ways and in many different forms. It has been debated by philosophers, theologians, scientists, and thinkers across the ages. And yet, despite the multiplicity of perspectives and the depth of thought, there remains no single, definitive answer. So, what makes us human? Is it our capacity for language, for thought, for creativity? Is it our ability to dream, to hope, to love? Or is it something else entirely, something deeper, something intrinsic to our very being? Perhaps it is our consciousness, the very fact that we are aware of our existence, that sets us apart. This capacity to perceive ourselves and the world around us, to reflect on our perceptions, to question and to seek understanding this is a uniquely human trait. It is this consciousness, this self-awareness, that allows us to experience the world in a way that is profoundly different from other creatures. We do not simply exist, we perceive. We do not merely survive, we strive. We do not just adapt, we create. And it is this interconnectedness that brings a richness and depth to our human experience. We are not merely individuals, but part of a larger whole. Our actions, our thoughts, our feelings, all resonate within this larger context influencing and being influenced by the world around us. Our capacity for empathy, for understanding and sharing the feelings of others, is another key aspect of our humanity. It is through empathy that we connect with others, that we build relationships, that we create community. Empathy allows us to step outside of our own experience, to see the world from another's perspective, and to respond with kindness and compassion. And so, the question of what makes us human is not simply a matter of defining a set of traits or characteristics. It is a question of understanding the complexities and nuances of our existence, of exploring the depths of our consciousness, of acknowledging our interconnectedness and our capacity for empathy. In essence, to be human is to be capable of experiencing and contributing to the richness and complexity of life. It is to be aware, to strive, to create, to connect, to empathize. It is to be part of a larger whole, while simultaneously maintaining our individuality. In the journey of understanding what makes us human, we learn not just about ourselves, but about each other and about the world we inhabit. And it is this journey, this constant striving for understanding, that truly encapsulates the essence of our humanity. This brings us to Friedrich one of the most profound and provocative thinkers in the history of Western philosophy. Nietzsche was a man who dared to challenge the status quo and push the limits of conventional thought. Nietzsche's philosophy is a reflection of his own quest for understanding. His work is an exploration of the nature of existence, of the human condition, and of the fundamental questions of life. He was a philosopher who sought to delve into the depths of human consciousness to probe the complexities of our existence, and to uncover the truths that lie beneath the surface of our perceptions. Friedrich Nietzsche was not just a philosopher in the academic sense. He was a philosopher in the truest sense of the word. He was a seeker of wisdom, a pursuer of truth, a man who dedicated his life to the exploration of the human condition. His philosophy was not merely a set of abstract theories, but a living, breathing reflection of his own experiences, thoughts, and feelings. Nietzsche's philosophy is characterized by a deep and profound understanding of the human condition. He delved into the complexities of our existence, exploring the depths of our consciousness and the intricacies of our relationships with ourselves and with the world around us. One of Nietzsche's central themes is the concept of the will to power. He viewed this as the fundamental driving force of human beings the underlying motivation that shapes our actions, our thoughts, our desires. The will to power, according to Nietzsche, is not just about power in the conventional sense, but about the power to create, to shape, to influence, to transform. Nietzsche's philosophy is rich, complex, and deeply thought-provoking. It challenges us to question our assumptions, to reflect on our beliefs, and to confront the realities of our existence. His work is a testament to the power of thought, the power of questioning, and the power of understanding. Friedrich Nietzsche was not just a philosopher, he was a visionary, a trailblazer, 
a man who dared to push the boundaries of conventional thought. His philosophy is a testament to the depth and complexity of the human condition, a reflection of his own quest for understanding, and a contribution to the ongoing exploration of what it means to be human. In Nietzsche's radical and provocative philosophy, one of his most profound and controversial statements is claimed that God is dead. Nietzsche, it should be noted, did not mean this in a literal sense. Rather, by pronouncing the death of God, he was pointing to the profound shift in Western culture wherein traditional religious and moral values were losing their power and influence. Nietzsche observed that as science, secularism, and rationality continued to rise, the need for divine authority and religious dogma was coming into question. In other words, the death of God was a metaphor for the death of the concept of a moral universe ordered by divine law. As loss of faith Nietzsche was pointing out that in the absence of a higher moral authority, humans would need to find new ways of creating meaning in their lives. Nietzsche's God is dead was a call to recognize the implications of this new reality and to take responsibility for our own moral and ethical decisions. But Nietzsche's assertion was not just about the death of God, but about the birth of a new kind of human, the Obermensch or Overman. The Overman, as Nietzsche envisioned it, is the next step in human evolution, a being who has overcome the limitations of traditional morality and who creates his own values. This idea provokes us to ponder the question of morality in a godless universe. It pushes us to think about how we can create meaningful lives in a world devoid of divine intervention or guidance. It challenges us to consider the implications of our actions and decisions not in relation to a divine moral code, but in relation to our own intrinsic values. Nietzsche's philosophy, in its depth and complexity, forces us to confront the realities of our existence, to question our assumptions, and to seek our own answers. It is a philosophy that is as relevant today as it was in Nietzsche's time, a philosophy that continues to challenge, provoke, and inspire. In this exploration of Nietzsche's thought, we are reminded of the power of philosophy to challenge the status quo, to provoke thought, and to inspire change. We are reminded of the importance of questioning, of seeking understanding, and of creating our own meaning. We are reminded, in essence, of what it means to be human. Turning our attention to a different perspective, let's consider the ideas of Carl Jung, the Swiss psychiatrist and psychoanalyst who founded analytical psychology. Jung's work explored the complexities of the human psyche and delved into areas such as dreams, art, mythology, religion, philosophy, and the occult. Jung's work is a testament to the breadth and depth of the human experience. He believed that understanding the human psyche was key to understanding the human condition, and he dedicated his life to exploring the mysteries of the mind. Central to Jung's work is the concept of individuation, the lifelong psychological process of differentiation of the self out of each individual's conscious and unconscious elements. It's a process of self-discovery, self-understanding, and self-realization. It is about understanding and integrating all aspects of oneself the conscious and the unconscious, the personal and the collective, the human and the divine. Jung's work also introduced the concept of the collective unconscious, a level of unconscious shared with other members of the human species comprising latent memories from our ancestral and evolutionary past. He suggested that this collective unconscious contains archetypes, universal symbols and themes that are present in all cultures and epochs, shaping our behaviors, our beliefs, our dreams, and our aspirations. Jung's notion of synchronicity, another key concept, suggests that events are meaningful coincidences if they occur with no causal relationship, yet seem to be meaningfully related. This challenges the conventional understanding of causality, and invites us to consider the possibility of an interconnected universe where everything happens for a reason. In essence, Carl Jung's work is a testament to the power of self-understanding, self-realization, and self-transformation. It is a testament to the depth and complexity of the human condition, and to the potential of the human spirit. It is a testament, in short, to what it means to be human. In the vast landscape of human understanding, Eric from stands as a beacon. A renowned social psychologist, psychoanalyst, and humanistic philosopher, 
from sought to understand the intricate relationship between the individual and society. Fromm's work was centered around the idea of freedom. He believed that one of the fundamental aspects of human nature is our need for freedom, the ability to transcend the immediacy of our existence, to shape our own life, and to establish our own individual identity. However, Fromm also recognized that freedom can be a double-edged sword. On one hand, it empowers us, allowing us to express our individuality, to make choices, and to create our own path. On the other hand, it can also induce feelings of isolation, anxiety, and insignificance. Fromm's exploration of freedom led him to the concept of escape mechanisms, ways in which humans evade the existential anxiety that comes with freedom. These escape mechanisms can take various forms, such as automaton conformity, authoritarianism, and destructiveness. Fromm's work illuminates the complex and often contradictory nature of human existence. It highlights the tension between our desire for freedom and our fear of the responsibilities and uncertainties that come with it. It underscores the importance of self-awareness, self-understanding, and self-determination in navigating the challenges of life. Fromm's exploration of the human condition is a testament to the power of self-awareness, self-understanding, and self-determination. It is a testament to the courage it takes to confront our fears, to challenge our assumptions, and to strive for authenticity. It is a testament, in short, to what it means to be human. When we contemplate the socio-political climate of Nietzsche's time, it becomes apparent that his ideas were a response to significant transformations in European society. The late 19th century was characterized by dramatic shifts in political, social, and cultural paradigms. It was a period of immense change and uncertainty, a time when the very foundations of society were being questioned. The Industrial Revolution, which had begun in the 18th century, continued to reshape the economic and social landscape of Europe. Rapid technological advancements and urbanization led to significant changes in the way people lived and worked. These changes brought about new challenges and opportunities, disrupting traditional ways of life and hierarchies. Political revolutions and the rise of nationalism were other defining aspects of this period. The old order was being challenged, and new political ideologies were emerging. In Germany, where Nietzsche lived and worked, the unification of various independent states into a single nation in 1871 was a significant event that had far-reaching implications. Religion, too, was undergoing a transformation. The Enlightenment had ushered in an age of reason leading many to question traditional religious beliefs. Rationality and science were increasingly being seen as the means to understanding and explaining the world, relegating religion to a more peripheral role. It was in this context of upheaval and change that Nietzsche developed his philosophy. His ideas were a reaction to the shifting cultural and intellectual landscape of his time. He challenged the prevailing moral, religious and philosophical doctrines, advocating instead for the affirmation of life in all its complexity and contradiction. Nietzsche's philosophy is a powerful reminder of the complexities and contradictions of the human condition. It challenges us to question the assumptions underlying our beliefs and values, and to confront the realities of our existence. It compels us to explore the depths of our consciousness, to grapple with the complexities of our desires and fears, and to strive for authenticity and self-realization. It is a philosophy that resonates with the challenges and uncertainties of our own time, offering insights that remain as relevant and thought-provoking today as they were in Nietzsche's era. His own life experiences also played a profound role in shaping his philosophy. He was a man of ill health, suffering from various ailments throughout his life. His poor health forced him to resign from his position at the University of Basel at a young age leading him to live a solitary and somewhat nomadic life. This solitude, however, allowed to engage deeply with his own thoughts, developing and refining his philosophical ideas. The relationship with his family, particularly his sister Elizabeth, was complex and often strained. Elizabeth embraced German nationalism and anti-Semitism, ideologies that vehemently opposed. The misrepresentation of his work by Elizabeth after his death aligning it with ideologies he despised, was a great injustice to S. intellectual legacy. 
Nietzsche's own experiences of loss, suffering, and solitude were significant influences on his philosophy. His concept of the eternal recurrence, the idea that all events will repeat themselves infinitely, was a response to his own suffering. Believe that we must affirm life in all its aspects, including suffering and loss, and learn to love our fate, a concept he called amor fati. Nietzsche's own struggles with mental health, culminating in a mental breakdown in his final years, also had a profound effect on his philosophy. He saw madness not as a breakdown, but as a breakthrough a means of transcending the limitations of conventional thought. Nietzsche's madness can be seen as a metaphor for his philosophical quest to go beyond good and evil, to affirm life in all its complexity and contradiction. Nietzsche's life was characterized by a relentless pursuit of knowledge, a deep-seated desire to understand the human condition, and a profound love of life. Despite his struggles and hardships, Nietzsche remained committed to his philosophical quest, pushing the boundaries of conventional thought and challenging the status quo. Nietzsche's philosophy is a reflection of his own experiences, his struggles, his passions, and his insights. His work is a testament to his courage, his intellect, and his unwavering commitment to the exploration of the human condition. It is a testament to the power of thought, the power of questioning, and the power of understanding. It is a testament, in short, to what it means to be human. As we delve deeper into the landscape of human understanding, we find ourselves face to face with the ideas of Charles Darwin, the renowned English naturalist whose works have had a profound impact on our understanding of life. Darwin's theory of evolution by natural selection revolutionized the way we think about life, challenging traditional views and opening up new avenues for exploration and understanding. Darwin's ideas were a product of his time emerging from the scientific and intellectual milieu of the 19th. Darwin's theory of evolution posits that all species of organisms arise and develop through the natural selection of small, inherited variations that increase the individual's ability to compete, survive, and reproduce. It is a theory that places emphasis on slow, gradual change over time, driven by the interplay between individual variation and environmental pressures. This idea of evolution, of gradual change over time, can also be seen as a metaphor for the human condition. Just as species evolve in response to environmental pressures, so too do individuals and societies evolve in response to the challenges and opportunities they encounter. Human evolution is not just a biological process, but a psychological, social, and cultural process as well. It is a process that involves the interplay between our innate drives and desires, our learned behaviors and beliefs, and the environmental pressures and opportunities we encounter. Darwin's theory of evolution also has profound implications for our understanding of the nature of life itself. It challenges us to view life not as a fixed, static entity, but as a dynamic, evolving process. It encourages us to embrace change, to value diversity, and to recognize the interconnectedness of all life. In essence, Charles Darwin's work is a testament to the power of scientific inquiry, the power of questioning, and the power of understanding. It is a testament to the depth and complexity of life, and to our ongoing quest to understand and make sense of our world. It is a testament, in short, to what it means to be human. Taking a leap from the natural sciences to the world of literature, Fyodor Dostoevsky, the acclaimed Russian novelist, provides us with another perspective on the human condition. Dostoevsky's novels are renowned for their psychological depth and exploration of existential themes. They delve into the complexities of the human mind and grapple with profound questions about life, morality, and existence. Dostoevsky's characters often find themselves in extreme situations, grappling with intense moral and existential dilemmas. These characters, in their struggles and introspections, embody the complexity and contradiction of the human condition. They are individuals striving for meaning and redemption in a complex and often unforgiving world. One of Dostoevsky's most notable works, Crime and Punishment, explores the psychological torment of Raskolnikov, a man who commits a murder in a misguided attempt to prove a philosophical point. Raskolnikov's internal struggle is a profound exploration of guilt, justice, and redemption. 
In the brothers Karamazov, Dostoevsky delves into the moral and spiritual dilemmas of the Karamazov brothers, each representing different aspects of the human psyche. The novel tackles profound questions about faith, doubt, reason, and morality. Through the lens of Dostoevsky's work, we are invited to explore the depths of our own psyche, to grapple with our own existential dilemmas, and to seek our own paths to redemption and meaning. His work is a testament to the power of literature to illuminate the human condition, to provoke thought, and to inspire empathy and understanding. It is a testament, in short, to what it means to be human. Continuing this exploration, we turn to Sigmund Freud, the father of psychoanalysis. Freud's work revolutionized our understanding of the human mind, introducing concepts such as the unconscious, the Oedipus complex, and the mechanism of repression. His theories, while controversial, have had a profound impact on psychology, sociology, anthropology, literature, and art. Freud believed that our behavior and personality are largely influenced by unconscious forces. He argued that many of our desires, thoughts, and feelings are hidden from our conscious mind and manifest themselves in our dreams, slips of the tongue, and neurotic symptoms. Freud's exploration of the unconscious was groundbreaking. He used techniques such as dream analysis, free association, and transference to uncover repressed memories and desires, and to treat mental health disorders. Despite facing criticism and skepticism, Freud remained committed to his exploration of the mind's hidden depths. Freud's concept of the Oedipus complex, while controversial, offered a new perspective on human development. He proposed that during a certain stage in childhood, children experience unconscious feelings of love for the opposite-sex parent and rivalry with the same-sex parent. According to Freud, these early experiences shape our adult personality and relationships. Freud's theories, in their depth and complexity, challenge us to confront the hidden dimensions of our psyche. They compel us to acknowledge the power of unconscious forces in shaping our behavior, our personality and our relationships. They remind us of the importance of self-awareness and self-understanding in leading fulfilling and meaningful lives. In essence, Sigmund Freud's work is a testament to the power of exploration, understanding, and self-reflection. It is a testament to the complexities and mysteries of the human mind, and to our ongoing quest to understand ourselves and others. It is a testament, in short, to what it means to be human. Delving further into the sphere of philosophy, we encounter the contributions of Immanuel Kant, the German philosopher who is considered a central figure in modern philosophy. His work in epistemology, metaphysics, ethics, and aesthetics have had a profound influence on a wide range of philosophical disciplines. In the realm of ethics, Kant proposed the concept of the categorical imperative, a principle that requires us to act in such a way that we could will our actions to become a universal law. This was a departure from consequentialist ethical theories, which judge actions based on their outcomes. Kant's ethics emphasized the inherent value of rational beings and the duty to respect the dignity of all individuals. Kant's aesthetic theory introduced the idea of the sublime, a profound aesthetic experience that arises from our encounter with the vast, the infinite, and the overwhelming. The experience of the sublime, Kant argued, instills in us a sense of our own moral and intellectual capacities. Kant's philosophy, in its breadth and depth, invites us to reconsider the nature of knowledge, morality, and beauty. It challenges us to reflect on our own cognitive faculties, our ethical responsibilities, and our aesthetic experiences. It compels us to question our assumptions and to seek a deeper understanding of ourselves and the world. Kant's work is a testament to the power of philosophical inquiry, the power of critical thinking, and the power of understanding. It is a testament to the complexities and mysteries of human existence, and to our ongoing quest to make sense of the world. It is a testament, in short, to what it means to be human. Moving the spotlight to the realm of sociology we explore the work of Émile Durkheim, a French sociologist known for his pioneering role in the development of modern sociology. Durkheim's work focused on understanding the relationship between individuals and society, and he was particularly interested in the role of social institutions and collective consciousness in shaping our behavior 
and sense of self. Durkheim's concept of social facts, external forces that influence our behavior, introduced a new way of looking at societal phenomena. He argued that social facts, such as cultural norms, legal systems, and religious beliefs, exist independently of individuals and exert a coercive power over our actions and thoughts. In his study of suicide, Durkheim demonstrated the power of social forces in shaping individual behavior. He found that rates of suicide varied across different social groups and suggested that these variations could be explained by differences in social integration and moral regulation. Durkheim's work on religion is also noteworthy. In his book, The Elementary Forms of Religious Life, he proposed that religion is a social phenomenon, a system of beliefs and practices that reinforce group cohesion and collective identity. He suggested that the function of religion is not just to explain the world, but to create a sense of social solidarity. Durkheim's sociological perspective challenged the individualistic view of human behavior, emphasizing instead the role of social structures and collective forces. His work reminds us that we are not isolated beings, but are deeply embedded in a social fabric that shapes our behavior, our thoughts, and our identity. Turning our attention to the realm of economics, we delve into the theories of Karl Marx, the German philosopher, economist, and political theorist whose ideas have had a profound impact on various disciplines, including sociology, political science, and history. Marx's work focused on understanding the dynamics of capitalism and the class struggle. Marx's concept of historical materialism proposed that the socio-economic system under which we live the mode of production shapes every aspect of our society, including our social structures, political systems, and ideologies. In his critique of capitalism, Marx argued that capitalist societies are characterized by a fundamental conflict between the bourgeoisie, who own the means of production, and the proletariat, who sell their labor power. He believed that this class struggle would inevitably lead to a revolution and the establishment of a classless, communist society. Marx's theories provide a lens through which to examine the dynamics of capitalism and the forces that drive social change. They challenge us to question the fairness of our economic systems and to consider the impact of economic structures on social inequality. In essence, Marx's work is a testament to the power of critical thinking, the power of questioning, and the power of understanding. It is a testament to the complexities of economic life and to our ongoing quest to understand the world around us. It is a testament, in brief, to what it means to be human. Shifting gears to the sphere of political philosophy, we encounter the ideas of John Locke, an influential Enlightenment thinker often known as the father of liberalism. Locke's political theory centered on the concepts of natural rights, government by consent, and the right of revolution, which have deeply influenced democratic political thought. Locke posited the existence of natural rights life, liberty, and property inherent in every individual. He proposed that the primary purpose of government is to safeguard these rights. This idea contrasted with the prevailing notion of divine right of kings, asserting instead the inherent dignity and rights of every individual. The right of revolution, another key idea in Locke's political philosophy, asserts that people have the right to overthrow a government that fails to protect their natural rights. This idea laid the groundwork for many democratic revolutions around the world. Locke's political philosophy underscores the importance of individual rights, collective decision-making, and checks on governmental power. It reminds us of the value of democratic principles and the importance of active citizenship. In essence, Locke's work is a testament to the power of political philosophy, the power of critical questioning, and the power of democratic principles. It is a testament to the complexities of political life and to our ongoing endeavor to create just and equitable societies. It is a testament, in short, to what it means to be human. In the domain of literature and social criticism, we delve into the work of George Orwell, an English novelist and essayist known for his keen observations on political corruption, totalitarianism, and the manipulation of language. Orwell's works such as 1984 and Animal Farm have left an indelible mark on the world of literature and continue to resonate in contemporary society. 
the dystopian world of 1984 Big Brother, the use of Newspeak, and the relentless rewriting of history all served to control and manipulate the populace. In Animal Farm, Orwell uses the allegory of a farmyard rebellion to critique the corruption of socialist ideals in the Soviet Union. The maxim all animals are equal, but some animals are more equal than others encapsulates the betrayal of the revolution's original principles and the consolidation of power in the hands of a few. Orwell's incisive critique of political systems and his exploration of themes such as power, corruption, and deception challenge us to question the integrity of our institutions and the veracity of the narratives we are presented with. They underscore the importance of critical thinking and vigilance in the face of potential manipulation and control. George Orwell's work is a testament to the power of literature as a vehicle for social criticism, the power of the written word, and the power of critical thinking. It is a testament to the complexities of political life and to our ongoing endeavor to discern truth from falsehood. It is a testament, in short, to what it means to be human. Navigating to the sphere of music, the contributions of Ludwig van, the acclaimed German composer and pianist, have shaped the course of Western classical music. Beethoven's impact on music extends beyond his composition, reflecting a deep understanding of human emotions and a keen exploration of the transformative power of music. Beethoven's Symphony No. 9, often referred to as the Ode to Joy, transcends the boundaries of music to touch upon the universal human experience. The symphony, with its final chorus set to Friedrich Schiller's poem, celebrates the ideals of freedom, unity, and brotherhood. Beethoven's music, often characterized by its emotional depth and innovative form, broke away from the classical conventions of his time. His works, including his symphonies, sonatas, and string quartets, marked a transition from the classical period to the Romantic era in music. His personal struggle with hearing loss, which ultimately led to total deafness, adds another dimension to his work. The fact that some of his most profound compositions were created during a time when he was unable to hear is a testament to his extraordinary resilience and creative spirit. Beethoven's music invites us to explore the depths of our own emotions, to grapple with our own struggles, and to seek our own paths to resilience and transcendence. His work is a testament to the power of music to reflect and shape our emotional landscape, to challenge conventions, and to inspire change. It is a testament, in short, to what it means to be human. In the realm of existential philosophy, we encounter the ideas of Friedrich Nietzsche, a German philosopher best known as his critiques of traditional moral values and his proclamation of the death of God. Nietzsche's work, with its emphasis on the affirmation of life and the reevaluation of values, offers a profound exploration of human existence. Nietzsche's concept of the Ubermensch, often translated as Superman or Overman, represents a higher state of being that humans should aspire to. The Ubermensch. His proclamation of the death of God symbolizes the abandonment of traditional religious and moral values. Nietzsche believed that the decline of religious belief left a moral and existential void in society, but also offered an opportunity for the reevaluation of values and the creation of new meanings. Nietzsche's concept of eternal recurrence, the idea that all events will repeat themselves infinitely, challenges us to affirm life in its totality, including its struggles and hardships. Nietzsche's philosophy, with its emphasis on life affirmation and value creation, invites us to question traditional moralities and to seek our own paths to meaning and fulfillment. His work is a testament to the power of existential inquiry, the power of self-overcoming, and the power of life affirmation. It is a testament to the complexities of human existence and to our ongoing quest to make sense of our lives. It is a testament, in short, to what it means to be human. Up until next time, take care, and see you soon.